All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just to kind of reflect on what we talked about real quick, we had our WWE NXT review, our AEW Dynamite preview. We talked about how Jordan Grace opened the Forbidden Door from WWE to TNA. And we also recently talked about Brock Lesnar's name, ban, being lifted from the WWE. So let's go and move on to our fifth and final segment. I might actually end on time today, which is a freaking miracle because we always go overtime. You guys got to ready, get ready for uh, Ember and Soccer Podcast. It's amazing. Definitely recommend you guys check it out. If you want to, you know, refreshen up on all your cool soccer facts, find out who's kicking whose ass in terms of the Premier League and all that jazz. So, uh, yeah, go and check that out. So, all right, let's go and dig, uh, dig on into Dolph Ziggler sending a 20-page email to Vince McMahon stating his uh, stating that he wants his release. Imagine that, a 20-page email just convincing someone to be like, look, it, it's kind of like, have you ever broke up with a girl that you did not want to break up with? Like, it was so awkward. Like, she was great. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you're like, when you first started the relationship, you're like, yeah, let's give it a shot. But then as the time progressed, maybe a couple of months along the way, she's already saying, I love you. You're so amazing. She's looking up at you with those googly eyes. But in the back of your mind, you're like, look, dude, like, I don't really love you. I'm so sorry. You know, like, but, uh, but. And that's just something that Nick Nemeth was, you know, he sent a 20 page email asking for his release. <laughs> that's amazing. That's crazy. De- definitely a bunch of glazing, you know, for Vince McMahon in that case. So I thought that was pretty crazy. Recently, you saw, um, you know, TNA crossover with the WWE. Uh, WWE, one of their huge mistakes, I feel like definitely, was their loss of Nick Nemeth, was their loss of Dolph Ziggler. I think he's a huge, you know, he's a huge talent. He's obviously, you know, he has the in-ring capabilities. He can be that heel. He can be that baby face. He has the enthusiasm and the charisma. Definitely something that Triple H definitely misses inside of the ring. And if you put Dolph Ziggler into any matchups, unlike Brock Lesnar, he would just be great. He can obviously be assimilated into the storyline. He can put on good matches, unlike Goldberg. And like, well, back in the day, they could have did stuff for Dol- for Dolph Ziggler. The WWE could have booked him way better. But since, you know, I don't know if they just f- fell out of love with Dolph, which, you know, obviously is exactly what happened. You would have him lose in a match with Goldberg, you know, where he just spears him time after time after time, just punishing him. Or have him WWE champions with Bobby Roode. Or send him back down to WWE NXT. Uh, but I don't know. It was just... The- the way they handled Dolph Ziggler was terrible. It was trash. It was terrible. Like, you just diminished his values. You destroyed his confidence as a man, as a wrestler. That's, you know, that's kind of bad. That's on you. That's on you, story writers of WWE and or the Vince McMahon. Hope you guys aren't sleeping tonight. Hope you guys are, you know, you know, sweating in your sleep. Hope you guys, you know, ran, run over a nail tomorrow on the freeway. Hope you step on a Lego heading into the living room. You know, I'm just kidding. No, you know, moving on. Uh, but, um, you know, I just thought that was kind of crazy. He had a 19-year career. Uh, obviously, you remember him as Nikki from the Spirit Squad. <laughs> and like, I thought that, you know, definitely missed that. I love the Spirit Squad when they came out. We are the Spirit Squad. I, I, I thought that was funny. That was during the uh, the DX, you know, 2017 revamp, which I loved, which was freaking sick. Uh, so, 19 year career, uh, Dolph Ziggler got his push, you know, a little further back in his, uh, you know, WWE career. He lost, like I said, lost to Goldberg, and I felt like he kind of became a jobber on the main card. And it was kind of stupid. Kind of like what Malachi Black was and Keith Lee coming up from NXT. Kind of like what Ember Moon was. Kind of like where you see Indy Hartwell. And boy, you kind of see her kind of coming back. Like you see Shayna Baszler. Which these superstars that were absolutely awesome. And just the moment they kind of made it up to the main card. Like Andrade. You know, El Idolo. They weren't really handled well. And that wasn't their fault. They have all the talent in the world. You can have all the talent in the world. But something that my coach used to say when we were playing baseball, like you can have the best nine players on a baseball roster. But if you don't have a coach to develop a nice little game plan, to kind of have a strategy, kind of ultimately have something that's going to contribute to your success working together as a team, you're going to fail. You're going to lose. And by all means, that's exactly what happened with the WWE and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, So, um. 
After the first wave of releases, after the launch of the TKO Group Holdings, he was one of the, you know, superstars released. He went to New Japan Professional Wrestling, eventually showing up in TNA. His brother, Ryan Nemeth, advised him to leave WWE before he actually did, six months before. Probably should have listened to your brother, bro. Um, you know, sometimes brothers are, sometimes brothers are right. Sometimes. Um, WWE destroyed his confidence, losing to superstars that couldn't even make a name for themselves, like Baron Corbin, Shinsuke Nakamura, Finn Balor, and, um, you know, just the list goes on and on. Then you had him fall against Moose in the TNA Championship. I think he ultimately did that because he was injured. So I think during the match, they kind of, you know, had to make an adjustment where they were talking to Moose and they were, you know, and he was like, dude, like, I can't go on. Like, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. And I don't think I can represent this title. And that's just so selfless. That's just so selfless of, you know, Nick Nemeth doing the best for the company because he wants the company to do so well because if the company does well, ultimately they're going to do whatever they can to like promote your character and stuff like that. And Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth, or whoever, whatever you want to call him, this guy was one of the best wrestlers in the whole entire professional wrestling industry. Like I'm not lying. I'm not lying. Watching our growing up. All right. He had a thing with AJ Lee. He had a thing with Vicky Guerrero. Had that stupid freaking love storyline where Lana, Rusev's wife, was all over him, you know, and like it was just, it was nasty. It was, ugh. it was just a huge like. I, if I could throw up, I would absolutely like, ugh. like you know what I mean. Like it just it was awful, absolutely awful, one hundred and ten percent. So uh, he was basically gaslighted. He was gaslighted his opportunities in WWE. He's a former WWE NXT champion, Intercontinental World Heavyweight Champion, and um. He had this quote, this quote that he kind of said in his, um, you know, in his um, interview with, I think it was the Busted Open podcast. He said, the, th uh, the things you love don't love you back. And he loved wrestling. He loved the WWE. He did whatever he could to make sure that product day in and day out, day in and day out. This, this guy fought within a, within a year. I No, I think it was a year. No, I think his whole tenure in like WWE, this guy fought over like, 15 1500 matches like that's insane that's crazy so essentially he was going out to either put over himself other superstars or just to entertain the crowd and wwe didn't give a crap they didn't give a crap they ultimately released him they didn't like the way like it's you know they you, you overlook talent you do overlook talent and yeah i get it it happens from time to time but if it happens consistently and consistently now and now and now obviously we're under a new regime we have the paul levec era so hopefully we won't do some of the dumb you know stuff that vince mcmahon did in the past but he's also a money in the bank winner and he had a successful cash in with his money in the bank so like I said before, Nick Nemeth is definitely one of my one of my favorite wrestlers in the terms in uh, professional wrestling, you know, industry. Definitely think that WWE should do whatever they can to try to, you know, have this collaboration kind of work out. So maybe he could uh, make it back to WWE. Like, you know, I mean, it'd be cool to kind of see him in a match against like Cody Rhodes. That would be great. That'd be awesome. So, you know, obviously it's something that I'm highly rooting for. Hope you guys are rooting for it as well, because that would be dope as heck. So, guys, honestly, that was my show. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to Superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show. Leave a positive review here at the GSMC Sports Network. We love a little bit of peace, love, and positivity. No, not a little bit, a lot of it. A peace, love, and positivity. So, you know, kind of spread it, spread, spread kindness, spread, uh, spread generosity to end this, uh, you know, world hate, you know, and everything like that. So, and it really does make a difference, guys. We invite, we also invite you guys to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Like I said before, if you haven't made your wrestling fan by now, we have sports on sports on sports with the GSMC Sports Network. We have the Andrew Tate Show. We have Hoops and Heels, an all-women's uh, sports podcast, your one-stop shop for women's sports. We have Emerald coming up here uh, shortly with the uh, GSMC Soccer Podcast. We have Manny Football, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Kenneth on the Football Podcast. Football's right around the corner, and we all know that the, the, the NFL has prominent news, and, um, you know, they you have Manny and Kenneth who come day after day, come giving you guys the best takes possible. Like, uh, you know, why are you watching ESPN? Why are you watching Fox Sports? Give these guys a chance, and it's absolutely free. Forget cable, man. Forget I'm just kidding. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, but, um, I don't know, just check these guys out. The NBA playoffs, we have the finals that are going to come. I don't know if the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to be the first team in NBA history to come back from 3-0. Honestly, I think they will. 
I think they're going to come back. I think it's going to be a Minnesota Timberwolves and the Boston Celtics final and the Boston Celtics ultimately winning in like six games. That's my prediction. You know, that's because I feel like the Mavericks don't, you know, but no, okay. This isn't a pop basketball podcast. I'm drooling on and on. I don't want to leave you guys. And it just hurts. Thank you for tuning into my podcast. Once again, it is Wednesday. Hope you guys enjoyed your hump day. Tomorrow is Thursday. We're going to talk about Thursday night wrestling. And don't forget to miss that Friday podcast where we have my boy, Christopher from the sports, uh, from the fantasy sports podcast, the GSMC. And of course, always we have my man, Nelson, the best basketball podcast in in the entire earth, the GSMC basketball podcast. So, hey, guys, love you. Just remember, be kind to one another. I will see you tomorrow. So, hey, have a good night.